What is going on everybody? By now, many of us have already purchased our Surface Duo 2s, the device we were waiting for a long time to get, a device that I think finally brings the dual screen phone concept into the 21st century and really is the device that I feel like the original Surface Duo wanted, needed to be. But that being said, a lot of those of us who now have a Surface Duo 2 might be a little unfamiliar with either Android or with Surface Duo in general. So what I'm going to do here in this video is I'm going to give you a pretty good list here of my favorite tips and tricks for Surface Duo to help get you started off using your Duo like a pro. So on your Surface Duo, you're going to have a launcher experience that's going to look a bit like this. Now, obviously, I've customized mine a little bit with some widgets and so forth. And that's the first thing I want to show you how to do here because it's a little bit unclear. And again, if you're not an Android person, this may be weird for you to do. So on your Surface Duo, all you have to do is pick a spot on the screen, an empty space, and you're going to press and hold. Everything is going to zoom out like that. And you've got some interesting settings here, which I'll quickly touch on. You can click on a plus button here to get additional pages. You can delete them with that trash can button. But the thing we're looking at here first is widgets. So down at the bottom right, you can see add widget. If you click on that, you're going to get a list of all the apps you have that can create a widget. And if you see one that you like, all you have to do is press and hold and then drag it anywhere you want it on the screen. And now you've set that widget up on your screen. Now there's a ton of apps out there that have a ton of really nice widgets. My weather app here, which you can see is from Overdrop. If you don't like a widget, you just simply long press and you can stretch them, move them, you can delete them, whatever you need to do. But uh, my weather one here is an app called Overdrop and they've got a lot of really good widgets that I like quite a bit so definitely give them a look if you like that widget my search button over here actually is just to search for microsoft edge so you can use that you can use google whatever you want to do you may have also noticed in that same menu where you long press the background you have the ability to change wallpaper down there in the bottom right and from there you can see kind of a look here lock screen home screen if you click on choose new wallpaper you can take wallpapers from your phone from Bing images, which will pull up a series of really nice looking images. There are some wallpapers that it comes with. And if you pick one of these images, like we'll just do this one, you can choose to apply it to the home screen, lock screen, or both. And that is how you're gonna set your new wallpaper for your home screen or your lock screen. So what about spanning an app between both screens? Obviously Surface Duo is meant with having two apps open at a time in mind, but sometimes you wanna have one app span across both screens. Now on my capturing here, you'll see that there is a gap of wallpaper in the middle, of course, in reality, that's where the hinge is. So sometimes that's going to get a little bit in the way, but let's go ahead and take Twitter and we'll show how to span Twitter. So just like when you swipe up to go home, instead, if you swipe up and hold, you can sort of manipulate this thing around. You could either bring it to another screen which works really well, or you could bring it into the middle where you see you can see how that darkness expands across the whole device. Let that go, and you've got the app now spanned across both screens. And now some apps are gonna work better for that than others. If we take what I have here now, Twitter, obviously that doesn't look super great. There's a hinge right down the middle. You may like it better if you hold it vertically. That's not too bad, I don't think. And like I said, some apps are going to work better than others. Let's look at some apps that work well. Like let's go ahead and open up Outlook and you can see Outlook looks pretty normal but if we do span it across both screens you're going to get a pretty cool experience here where you've got your messages on the left side and you've got the actual message itself on the right side. Like I said not a lot of apps take advantage of this but the ones that do work really well. Let's take a look at YouTube here because I think YouTube is actually not as bad at spanning as some people think that it is. So let's go ahead and span YouTube and immediately, you know, again, you've got your hinge down the middle, whatever. Let's go ahead and pick a video that I won't get in trouble for. Like, I don't know, my own video. And again here, this isn't great because there's a hinge in the middle of the display. But if you rotate it this way, this isn't so bad because you have effectively a full screen video up top and then you can scroll down to the comment section 
down below. And yeah, the hinge does cut off the top comments from time to time. But overall, I don't think that's an altogether terrible experience. Now, what about if you really like Outlook spanned and you want it to be spanned every time you open it? You don't want to actually have to open it and then span it. Well, guess what? There's a way to do that now. So if you pull down from the top and open up your notification shade, we're actually going to get rid of that video plane as well. Touch the little cog there, open up your settings. And then down here where it says Surface Duo Features, go ahead and click on that. And you see where it says span apps automatically. Go ahead and open that up. And then all you have to do is scroll down to any app that you want to open up automatically span. And it can be any app that you want. We're going to pick Outlook. We're going to click back. Let's go back home. And let's open up Outlook. And there you go. It did go ahead and span automatically. You can see a little pop up there telling you that that is in fact what just happened. You can turn that off if you don't like it. But you can do this with any app. And there are some apps that it's going to work really well for. Let's go back to that screen now, and there's a couple of things to look at here. So first off is the glance bar. So if you don't know what this is, basically what you're seeing here on this picture, on the back side of Surface Duo where the two screens curve around on the hinge, you can get notifications of charging state, calls, messages, volume, etc., etc. This is a place where you can toggle all of these, turn these off or on if you don't like them. Go back again. Now we have an option for lift to wake. I've actually got that turned off just because it was annoying to me. But basically what this is, if it's turned on, is if you've got your Surface Duo off like this and you lift it up, it's going to wake itself up automatically. Now on Surface Duo, I don't really find that to be all that useful because you've, you, you open it to wake it up, right? How often is it sitting open somewhere for you to pick it up and turn on? But if that's something that you find useful, there's an option to turn that off or on. You have an option down below that for camera or flashlight when closed. Now what this means, this is actually really cool. So if you click on that, the power button, double clicking the power button will have one of two functions. You can have it turn on your flashlight or actually toggle the camera. So let's talk about this for a second. So the default state is to trigger the flashlight, and I actually really like this. If you double tap this power button, you get your flashlight on. I use this actually quite a bit already. I get up very early in the mornings for my side job. You actually saw when I'm working, <laughs> how many hours I'm working on my Outlook uh, next week. But when I do go in, I get up pretty early. It's dark. I don't want to wake my wife up. So I get up and I sneak out of the bedroom. And sometimes I'll use this to get around the house, to, you know, to get ready for work in the morning. Pretty cool. But the other option here is actually really interesting. So if you change it to open camera, what will happen? You double tap this power button. Now that I've changed the setting, it actually will vibrate telling you that the camera is now open. Then you can use the volume down button to take a picture. And I just snapped a picture there with this thing fully closed. Let's look at what kind of picture I was actually able to capture with the device actually closed. And there you go. You can see kind of what I was able to do here. And I mean, look, if you want to get good at doing that, people always say, oh, you, you can't you can't use Surface Duo 2's camera with the device closed. Technically, you can, but I do like to leave mine on the flashlight. What about system navigation down here? So by default, Surface Duo uses gestures. So if you want to go home, you just swipe up from the bottom and that takes you home. Maybe you don't like that. Maybe you want to use the three buttons. So you can simply change that here. You'll see things will slide up. And now what you have is an arrow at the bottom that is back. You'll see me hitting that there. A, the big middle button, now you just touch it to go home. And then the square opens up your multitasking view, which is normally opened up by swiping up and holding. Maybe this is something that's easier for you to use. I do prefer the gesture. And while we're talking about the gestures, let's just talk about them. So right now, swiping from the side, you can see that arrow pop up. That is how you're going to go back. A swipe straight up takes you home. Swipe up and hold gives you your multitasking setup. And then, of course, on either one, you can swipe up and move an app from screen to screen. This still works with the three button uh, setup. And speaking of these gestures, early on, there were some issues getting these gestures to work. And I don't know if it was the last update that kind of made this better for me or if I just got better at doing it. But I'm going to tell you kind of what I do to make the gestures on Surface Duo 2 work really well for me. So basically, you just want to slow down a little bit and be more deliberate with your gestures. Make sure you're starting your touch, your swipe on that white bar at the bottom and keep the gesture relatively short. The reason I say this is if you go too far with the gesture, you're going to start going into this mode. 
and it might get confused and it might go into multitasking or it might just not quite know what to do. So you want to be very deliberate, like I said, starting your, your gesture on that white bar. I keep that gesture very short and it does seem to work fine that way. But speaking of that back gesture earlier, let's go back into our settings. Let's go back into Surface Duo features and back into System Navigation. You can see there's a gear, a little cog next to that. By default, this is set here. And you can see when I'm doing this, it's moving a bar around on the side, that blue area. What this is, is it's the area where it's going to be listening for that back gesture. Now for me, it was a little undersensitive at the default spot. So I moved it up to here and that seems to be much easier for me to do. Your mileage may vary, but it's something to play with. All right, what about app groups? This is a pretty cool feature on Surface Duo as well. So what you can do is you can set two apps to launch together. Let's say I want Twitter and Reddit to launch both at the same time. Simply all, all I have to do is take Twitter, drag it on top of my Reddit app and let go. And you're going to get an option to make a folder or to make a group. Let's go ahead and make a group. You can set which app is on which screen. We're going to leave it like that. Hit OK, and there is our group. Of course, we could have named it as well. We didn't choose to do that, but you can name it. Now, whenever I select that, I'm going to launch both apps simultaneously. And you can long press and edit to change that name to swap the screens, or you can long press to delete it. Now, one of the apps earlier that we talked about that by default was set to auto spanning was the camera app. Little pro tip here, you can always double click the power button when the device is unlocked to launch that camera. But by default, the camera would launch spanned so that you would have your viewfinder here and your last taken pictures on that other side. And if you snap a photo, that picture will appear on the other screen so that you can see how you framed it. And of course, from there, you can click the edit button down below and get this really nice dual screen editing kind of layout where you can go in and adjust the exposure, the contrast, the highlights, whatever you want to do. But I've actually started using a slightly different setup. Let's go home and look down here at the bottom right where you see camera and Google photos. When you click on that now, you're going to get my camera app and my Google photos app. Let's go ahead and delete these last two images that I just took. But the same thing is true here. If I snap a picture again, it's going to pop up on Google Photos and it's going to work exactly the same as it did with the auto spanning camera app. But it's using a photo app that I actually prefer. And by doing that, I give myself some flexibility because now if I want to use the camera app not spanned, all I have to do is double click power. And if I want to use it spanned using the photos app, I just use the icon on the launcher. And so again, by doing that, I've given myself a little bit of added flexibility and I'm using a camera app that I prefer. So speaking of this camera app, you can see at the bottom, there are several different modes. If you want to access them, you just, you simply swipe left and right on the camera's viewfinder to move between them. You can touch these buttons here, 0.5, 1x, and 2x to go through your different lenses. And if you want to jump into your settings, you simply hit that arrow at the top where you can disable or enable night mode, timer, or flash, and then there's a settings button up top. So here, I do recommend having HDR photo on. The shutter light isn't terrible even with it turned on, but if you want to have quicker shutter, turn that off because it does speed things up. Scanning QR codes is on, so if you open up your camera and you point it at a QR code, a link will pop up to click to open up that link. Really nice feature. I do recommend on video, whether you leave it on 4K or 1080, put that on 60 FPS because the stabilization looks better on 60 FPS. Now, notoriously, Surface Duo 2 is terrible video stabilization. I've shown it in two different videos. You can see for yourself, go to my channel. You can find two different videos, one against Z Fold, one against the original Duo. The video looks okay, but the stabilization is bad. Put it on 60 FPS and it's a little bit better. I do like having the golden ratio grid turned on. If you don't know what that is, that's the grid you see there. It helps me line up my shots a bit better. And I also disable the shutter sound. I just don't like having a noise go off whenever I take a picture. It's just annoying. You can turn that off. So I just talked about how stabilization is not so great on Surface Duo. Well, another thing that's better than on the original, but still not as good as I would have hoped, is night mode. Well, luckily, there is a really easy fix for night mode, and it's called Gcam. I will put a link in the description down below to this particular Gcam. You're just going to install it, and then you're going to have two camera apps. That's unfortunate. 
but you can use this camera app exclusively for night mode and you'll thank me for having done so. Let's go ahead and open it up. I finally found one where the layout is actually correct and it's way better. You're just gonna click on night sight over here and let me give you a demonstration of exactly what I mean by night mode being better. Okay, so we are now in a dark corner of my studio here. You can see one thing, how laggy this is. This is not a recording artifact. For some reason in low light, it just lags. So you can see night mode is enabled up at the top. Let's go ahead and snap this picture, hold still, and the picture is taken. Okay, let's go home, and now let's open up Gcam, and let's go over to night sight. One thing you'll see is that it's just not nearly as laggy. Let's go ahead and take the same picture. Okay, now let's open these bad boys up and see what took the better picture. So on the left is the original duo, on the right is Gcam. Let's zoom in here and look, do I, do I even need to spend any time explaining how one is way better than the other? Do yourself a favor, install this Gcam port and use it for any time you need to take a night mode photo. All right, so let's talk about the fingerprint scanner on Surface Duo 2. I think it's better than the original. It is not actually part of the power button itself. It's fast, it's reliable. I really like it. And you can add multiple fingerprints to it. Let's say you've added your thumb during setup, but you want to add some other fingers. Well, that's really simple to do. First, just go back into your settings where we've lived for most of this video. Let's make sure we're back at the uh, home of the settings here. Let's scroll down to security and you will see fingerprint down here it says i've got two set up go ahead and click on that we're going to put in our pin and then you can simply add a fingerprint if you touch that let's go ahead and add i don't know why i would but let's let's add my other thumb and you just add this just like you would any other fingerprint until that is fully set up here's a good way to maybe speed up the way that surface duo 2 might feel this works on every phone but it's something that a lot of people do on all of their devices back in settings let's scroll down to the about section Let's scroll down to where we see build number. We're going to click that a whole bunch of times until it says you are a developer. Back up, go into settings, and then into developer options. Let's scroll all the way down to where we see window animation scale. A lot of people set these to 0.5. And what this will do when we see it here is different, different gestures like going home, the animation should just play out at about half the speed as normal. Some people claim that they see a big difference and that it feels better to them personally. I don't mind the way it is by default. But before we close this screen, let's swipe up and hold to go to our multitasking view. Let me point out a couple of things here. First off, you'll see a button to the right that says screenshot. This is actually really good because let's say I'm in Twitter and I want to tweet a screenshot of that page. Well, normally on Surface Duo, I would need to fold it over into phone mode to get rid of that other screen open it up you can press power and volume down to just screenshot it that way then you got to go home and go back to twitter or open it back up into book mode and send it that way that's your simplest route before well now it's much easier than that because i can have twitter already open let's go to tweet let's swipe up and hold hit the screenshot button then it's going to screenshot just that window and now i can go to my images and there it is you also got a pop-up down there to go straight into edit that image, which I edit it with Google Photos, but you can use whatever editing app you want. That is so much better than it used to be. Back on that multitasking screen, though, let's scroll all the way down, and there is a close all button. I wish it wasn't at the very bottom, but it is there in case you hadn't found it. Back in settings and under display, there is an option to go between vivid and natural colors. Let's open up a picture here. So that you might be able to see a difference. This is natural. This is vivid. You're probably not going to be able to see any difference at all on this recording. But to my eye, it does make the picture look ever so slightly more saturated. But not crazy saturated, right? This isn't like Samsung from 8 years ago where everything was cranked up to 11. Even on vivid mode, I think things are pretty natural and look pretty good. Speaking of making things look good, let's open up our keyboard here and I'll show you how to customize the look. You can see I have a custom background on my keyboard. If you hit these two little arrows right there on the left, you see it spinning. You're going to then hit these little three dots on the right and let's click on themes. And you can go in and you can go through a gallery of themes or you can create a custom theme. So I've got mine here where I just set an image. I turned off the keyboarders and I like the way that looks. 
pretty good. Another cool thing that this keyboard can do, you'll notice that when it's on the right, the keys slide over to the right. When it's on the left, they slide over to the left. Well, what about if you want to type with both thumbs? If you span an app and go to tweet or go to type something, you will actually get a split thumb keyboard where you can type like this if that is more comfortable to you, like a more standard tablet. Now, for those that don't know, I'm actually recording this using something called the Your Phone app. Let me drag this over to this other window and let me get rid of that. And you can see this app. And what this app will do is it lets you get your notifications, messages, photos, phone calls, and actually control your Surface Duo all from this app wirelessly. Now, if you want to know how to do this yourself, let's put that back over and turn that back on. I will link a full video to that in the description down below as well. I'll show you how to set up all of it. If you go to the far left screen on your launcher, there is a thing called the Microsoft Launcher Feed. And if you scroll down, you can edit this view. And what you can do here is you can place widgets, just like I placed a widget on the home screen. You can place one over here by scrolling down and hitting Add Widget. Let's say you want to add time and weather to the top. If you click on that, that will now put that down at the bottom. Let's edit it and we can drag that all the way up to the top like so. And if we go back, that will be up there. You can then long press and remove it or whatever you want to do. I like to keep some businessy widgets over here like my calendar, a to-do list, my Google Notes, and then my screen time. But you can customize that as you wish. Google Pay is a thing on Surface Duo now. So I'm not going to go into my Google Pay app because there's likely to be some sensitive stuff in there. But you can see GPay there. We open up the Play Store and you search for GPay. And you simply install that app. You can set that up with your debit card, your credit card, whatever you want to do. And then if you're out someplace that has tap to pay, all you have to do is open up your Surface Duo. I put mine into phone mode, unlock it. You're ready to use Google Pay at that point. Tap it against the kiosk. It will vibrate and you will be able to pay that way. It works very, very well. Glad to see that feature is finally present. And last but not least, I want to show you how you can drag images and text from one screen to the other. Here I am in Microsoft Edge. You long press on some text and then drag it down and highlight the text in that image. We can then press and hold on any of that and then drag it over to an app like OneNote and bring everything over. How cool is that? How handy and useful is that functionality? I love it. So guys, I just showed you a whole bunch of cool stuff about Surface Duo 2. Lots of tips and tricks. If you have some that I missed, drop them in the comments down below. Maybe you could help your fellow Duo gang member out. Guys, thanks for making it to the end of today's video. Thanks for hitting that subscribe button. Thanks for hitting that join button as so many of you have to help support the channel. Stay tuned for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.